my friends, welcome to the final cut, and today we're going to take a look at Killer Schoolgirls from Outer Space. He has this send-up to Roger Corman films and cheesy sci-fi 50s films. Uh, it tells us the story of a small town where three schoolgirls from outer space have landed because they're working on directives from the father to tell them, hey, go wipe out everybody on planet Earth. And so they decide, decide to start their mission in this small town. And so Ben and Allison, the quarterback and cheerleader respectively, end up crossing paths with the aliens and they go and team up with the law enforcement to try to thwart the aliens' plans for wiping out planet Earth. Uh, <laughs> this is brought to us by Alexander uh, Schumacher, or, or Schumach, I'm, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, I do apologize. Who also wrote this? First time director and writer, and it's not a bad uh, project at all for his first time. Uh, it's definitely, you can tell, it's a send up to those cheesy sci fi films, as well as hints of Roger Corman in here. Uh, you can see the influences throughout. And you get the cheesy dialogue, which from a film with the name Killer Schoolgirls from Outer Space, you wouldn't expect anything less. And all these characters were pulled right out of those types of films, from the quarterback and his girlfriend to the law enforcement to the cranky old sheriff. Oh, I loved him. He was played by Clem Beard. And he was just this great cranky old sheriff who, who would go on these rants that made me smile, you know, just because I loved his performances of it. Though it did look a little bit like he was reading much out of uh, cue cards, but again, you know, for, for a film like this, you can be a little more relaxed on it because you're not expecting some grade-A cinema here. You're expecting for some cheesy entertainment, and that's what you get for Killer uh, Schoolgirls from Outer Space. The Killer Schoolgirls look the part in their short plaid skirts and their white shirts. They don't have a lot of dialogue, and when they do deliver, it kind of sounds Valley Girl-ish, but I did love their laser guns, which could explode body parts, disintegrate things, or cut things, depending on the situation. They were like a Swiss Army laser are gun. Uh, and I kind of you know, I liked that idea, but if they're going for the cheesy sci-fi angle of it, I would have liked them to just stay on this dis disintegration uh, effects. Because they also used a number of uh, seed scenes with CGI blood, and that one, you know, I, I like to see practical. They had some practical effects in here as well, but they used a lot of the cheesy CGI blood, and, and that took away from me a little bit from uh, enjoying it more, just because it was very noticeable. And for me, I prefer practical over CGI. I know it's a low-budget film, but still, uh, I would have just liked to see him disintegrate all these people because uh, definitely be in the vein of that 50s sci-fi uh, angle. Plus, uh, if it would have been black and white, I think it would have helped as well to be an older send-up to those films. But, you know, that's just a personal taste of mine. On the whole... Killer Schoolgirls from Outer Space, you get exactly what you expect from a film like this, okay? Some entertaining, fun times uh, that you can laugh with some friends. You'll go, oh my god, they went there. And, you know, the Killer Schoolgirls definitely are rather easy on the eyes. So if you like cheesy sci-fi, independent films of that nature, you know, kind of send-ups to Roger Corman and those type of films, then you can check out Killer Schoolgirls from Outer Space. While it's not fantastic cinema, it's not horrible either, and it's not that long of a movie either, so I think you'll enjoy it. And that'll about do it for us here at The Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuff.